Excuse me, please. Could I trouble you for a match? Sure, here you are. Thank you very much. I do not smoke. What time is it, please? Quarter past ten. Uh, thank you very much. So it is. Say, what is this? I am practicing my English. Oh, I see. Your first trip to the States? Yes. Look. She's beautiful. Huh? Yes, I know how you feel. I get the same thrill every time I come home. But, but she is very beautiful, too. Oh, your wife? No. Soon, when she comes to America. Uh -huh. Well, good luck. Don't lose your passport. It's a very beautiful city, huh? Do you want to buy it? Oh, no, thank you, but can you please tell me where is a good hot and cold water hotel? The Carlton Plaza. Carlton Plaza? Yeah, six blocks up, one block over, and two blocks to your left. Thank you very much. They're waiting for you. Yes. Six blocks up, one block over, two blocks to the left. Carlton Plaza, six blocks up, one block over, two blocks to the left. Six blocks up, one block over, two blocks. They are waiting for me. <laughs> one more block left, two blocks over. One more block left, and two blocks. All juices, five cents. I give all the pangers for dollars on a boat. The boat bank men can prove it. You take it up with Lieutenant here. He handles all the big cases. No, no, not him. I, I need a policeman. I'm a policeman. Look, all the money I had, it is gone. I'm lost. I, no, I have wait a no minute. more. Take it easy. But you can see it is all gone. When was the last time you saw it? I don't know. Oh, oh yes, on a boat. A man was talking about gangsters, and, and I was frightened. I went to the to the washroom, and here I stood him. Here I stood him. I am found. I I put it here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Policeman. Thank you. You have found my money. Oh, American police is wonderful. Yeah, we're pretty smart, all right. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mr. O'Hara, Jim O'Hara. Thank you, Mr. Jim O'Hara. <laughs> One block to the left and two blocks to the right. And... One block to the left. Two... My hotel is lost. Now what are you talking about? My Carlton Plaza Hotel. Carlton Plaza? Yes, with hot and cold water. <laughs> I better straighten you out again. How about a cold drink? I will make more money so I can bring my Maria over from Hungary. And we will be married, and then we are going to have one boy, one girl, one boy, one girl, one boy, five, all Americans. And the boys will be watchmakers like me. <laughs> all I have to do is find quicker job. The first thing to do is to find your place to live. Terry Finnegan's place, it's just a thing. It's clean, comfortable, and cheap. Look, you just walk down that street for five blocks. Blocks? Blocks again? You cannot come with me? No, I'll do back at headquarters. But you'll find it easy enough. Just walk five blocks, straight, no turns. Five blocks. It's the Excelsior Palace. You can't miss it. But if I'm lost again, I... I come to you, Mr. O'Hara, to police headquarters, and you can find me again, huh? <laughs> you are a very good friend. I will never forget. Mm. 
wish the policeman O'Hara sent me, you know, the policeman without uniform. Sure, I know the old hog trotter. I want a room, please, for my home. Oh, for your home? Yeah. Well, mister, we got 27 empty rooms. Take yeah. your pick. If it wasn't for the cafe, I'd have to close down. How much, please, for my room? Six bucks a week. Bucks? Oh, yeah. I know you mean six dollars. That's right. Now, uh, here, sign right there. Yes. We only got two rules, and they go for everybody. No ironing, because it blows out the fuses. No cooking in the rooms, because it's very bad for the cafe business. Well, thank you very much. What's your line? Please? Are you looking for employment? No, I want a job. I, uh, huh? What's the matter? That chicken liver dishwasher, every time his wife has a baby, he walks out. And she always has him when there's a rush on. I can't leave the stove and the dishes are piled up from what, here to please? The... If dishes are dirty? That's putting it mildly, mister. <laughs> but I wash, I can wash dishes. That's right, this guy wants a job. <laughs> can you wash him without smashing him? In America, I can do anything. Okay, let's go. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it is wonderful, you Maria. Wonderful. You know Maria will be rich. I have a job already and very soon we'll be together. Not this time, Finnegan. <laughs> Mr. Finnegan partially identified him. Ah, oh, the poor little guy. He was so hopeful. What are his chances? Third degree burns, 50-50 chance. Well, look, if anything happens, would you please let me know? And here, slip him that for extras. Unfortunately, I gotta go to Chicago on a case, and I don't know when I'll be back. But you can always reach me care of police headquarters. It's Lieutenant James O'Hara. Don't let him leave here without notifying me. You see, I... 
Well, I feel responsible for the little guy. I sent him to that hotel. Yes, Lieutenant O'Hara. Doctor, really, the bandages are coming up now? That's right. Is everything ready, nurse? Yes, Doctor. Lower the window shade, please. <laughs> Tell me, Doctor, and soon I can go and, and look for work. What kind of work do you do? But, oh, everything. <laughs> Watchmaking, wood carving. Oh. I, I have very clever hands, Doctor. I, I worked in an airplane factory, too. I, I can do anything mechanical. <laughs> I, I am a mechanical genius. <laughs> it's a good thing the fire didn't get your hands, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, just relax. I have to cut this, and it may hurt a little. I saw that sign in your window, sir. I'm an expert watchmaker. Yeah, good. I would like very much to work here, sir. What experience have you had? Oh, I had experience in, in Hungary. I was, I was apprentice for three years, and for two years, I was master watchmaker in Verestin. I'm sorry, the job's filled. I forgot to take the card out of the window. But I would work for very little, sir. The job is filled. For, for I can do anything you need, sir. In, in my country, I learned everything about aviation. For, for one year, I worked in a factory, and then I went on a field. I, I, I even flew solo. Th that was when I was in the army for, for two years. I can do anything with these hands. I'm sorry. I know, but my face makes no difference how I can work with my hands. I'm sorry, mister, but there's nothing doing here. I know. I know.
Got a match, please? You didn't I? <laughs> you thought it was a cop, huh? Well, let's see what Santa Claus left us. Don't get nervous, buddy. Relax. I ain't gonna hurt you. Wait, that cheapskate. Only 12 bucks. Well, what do you expect from these stockbrokers? You come back for it. Oh, well, what do you want me to do? Keep it safe and sound for him? Not me. Uh, here. Come on, take it. Uh, my name, my name is Dinky. What's yours? Janos. Janos? Oh, okay, Janos. You know, this is a pretty good break for both of us. I've been watching you. I knew what you was thinking before this happened. I was back there flipping the coin to see if I'd stop you or if I wouldn't. Stop me? Why? Oh. Just some sporting interest, I guess. I just saying to myself, well, heads he jumps and tails he doesn't, and heads I saves him and tails I doesn't. But what do you want to do a thing like that for? Hungry? Or because of a dame? Which is it? <laughs> oh, your face. Well, gee, that ain't nothing. I don't want to live. What do you get out of being dead? Laying in the grave ain't my idea of life. I cannot work. Nobody will talk to me. Nobody will look at me. I'm looking at you. And I'm talking to you. Hey, listen, you're pretty lucky to find a guy like me. What's the matter? Oh, wait a minute. What you need is some hot grub. Come on, you're going with me. Yeah, Yannis. I've been on my own ever since I was 15. I learned my lesson early. You gotta go for the free rides in this world. You gotta grab everything you can for yourself before somebody else grabs it first. Only don't get too greedy. I grabbed one thing too many once, and I got free room and board in a reform school. What you stole? <laughs> well, that's what they called it. But think it is wrong to steal. You can't do wrong and find happiness in life. Never. What do you get out of going straight? I tried to go straight six or seven times. But something always went wrong. Something always happened. You know, Giannis, I got a mother out in the Middle West. She's been waiting for me to come home. And I've been expecting to go, too. I don't know. I guess maybe that's not for me. I had a pretty good chance last year. I saved up some dough, and I was going to buy her that chicken ranch she's always wanted. And then I got sick, and I went to the hospital for four months. When I got out, my job was gone. Honesty don't pay. I cannot get any job, but I wouldn't steal. But you already did steal, Yannis. What if you hadn't? Suppose you had taken the poke to the police. Then where'd you be? You'd be hungry. Well, this way we're eating. We got a room, haven't we? Oh, boy, it's been so long since I've seen a real bed, I won't know how to sleep in it. And when the money is gone, the bed is gone, then what will you do? Didn't you turn up tonight? Did I know I was going to be here a couple hours ago? Something always happens. Besides, I got plans. Just waiting for a buddy of mine who's doing a stretch up the river. But he'll be out in a couple of months, and he'll have plenty of jobs. Jobs? You think one for me? Oh, you bet. Now, if you go to sleep, I'm dying to get the most out of the bed. We'll take everything up official like tomorrow, huh? Yes. Good night, Dinky. Good night, Johnny. <laughs> This ain't no hospital. If your pals are sick, call a doctor. 
I know, but we have no money. That's none of my business, buddy. You owe me for three nights. He's been keeping everybody awake with his coughing and wheezing. I'm sorry, but you'll have to pay or get out. I've been giving you a lot of trouble. Keep quiet, Dinky. Oh, you know, I've been kind of changing my mind. Kind of back and forth, like. And I think that sometimes it's better to be dead. Do not talk, Dinky. You know you must be quiet. <coughs> oh, if, if I only would have the money for a doctor. <coughs> and I was supposed to go out on a job. A job at the Broadway market. A job where? At the Broadway, near 4th and K. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, because you don't like to grab. Johnny, do something for me. Yes? I want you to go to Al's place. Look for Benson and Watts. Tell him, tell him I can't make it. Tell him I tried, but, but I'm too sick. Benson and Watts, sure. Yeah. At Al's place. Anybody will tell you who they are. <coughs> I still don't know how you did it, and without experience. <coughs> All you have to worry about is eat like this three times a day and take your medicine like the doctor said. I'd have given anything to see Benson and Watts' faces when they found that safe empty. Oh, boy, if you don't think I'm going to give them a ribbing. We will get you well first. That is all that matters, Dinky. Hello, Dinky. Hello, Benson. Sitting pretty here, ain't you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Who's that? Oh, he's all right. What's the matter with his face? Lay off that. You double-crossed on that market job. I haven't been out of bed. We know the taxi guy that brought you here. We know the junkyard you come from. And we know you didn't have any dough before that. Wasn't me. It was me. Where's the dough? <laughs> okay, okay, here, here's your share. How'd you do it? It wasn't difficult. Why, a guy can pull a job as slick as this can go places. Even Jeff couldn't do better. Oh, Jeff is that buddy of mine I told you about that's up in Sing Sing. He'll be getting out soon. Why do we need Jeff when we got a guy like him? Never mind that. Why? I got a lot of jobs lined up. The way he works, he don't leave a mark. We could be riding pretty. We could be living in a hotel, get a car, get everything. Okay, come on, get out of here and leave us alone. He doesn't like to talk about it. Go on. All right, think it over and I'll see you later. All right. You know, we can go a long way if we stick together. I don't understand. You've got to understand. Now listen, Johnny, we're fighting life. And Benson is right. We can all be riding pretty. No more flop houses, no more junkyards. We don't have to wait until Jeff finishes a stretch. You've shown him what you can do in that market job. And we know plenty of other spots, good spots. You've got a chance to get the thing you want more than anything else in the world. You don't know what I want. Yes, I do. You want a face. A new face. A face that people can look at without being scared to death. One that you can look at yourself without shuddering. One that'll let you stop thinking how to dodge people. Oh, look, Johnny, I'm not trying to hurt you. I want to help you. That's what you want, you've got a chance to get it. You can buy one. You can buy a face? It's being done every day. All you gotta have is money. Uh, I think they call them plastic doctors or something like that. You can buy anything with money. Money can get me a new face? Well, sure, Johnny, you don't have to look like that for the rest of your life. Why, I even knew a fella that the cops were after had his whole map changed. Could they fix my face so that people can look at me? All you need is money. 
Ani. I don't want to express a definite opinion. That must come from Dr. Cheever himself. But it is possible. Dr. Cheever has performed what you might almost term miracles. Yes. However, I'm only his assistant. The final word will still have to come from Dr. Cheever. But the doctor is on a vacation now. What am I going to do? I could fix you up with a temporary mask until his return. Would that be expensive? If you had a photograph or something to go by, I could make you a good mask for about $400. 400 And how much will a doctor charge? The fee for the operation naturally depends on exactly how much has to be done. Then there are the hospital charges. But, doctor, altogether how much? I can only tell you that the doctor's minimum fee is $1,000. $1,000? But, of course, time makes his fee higher. In your case, it might cost several times that amount. Will you want the temporary mask made? Yes, Doctor, I will be back with the money. understand it. The alarm didn't ring and yet the wires weren't disconnected or cut. What am I running here? A police force or the kindergarten? Are we all supposed to be on a picnic? I'm telling you, this mob must be caught. Now, they may be smarter than you are once in a while, but not week after week. That is impossible. What's the matter with you, O'Hara? You never laid down like this before. Are you dead? <laughs> Robberies, phantom robberies, mysterious robberies. Call them what you like. But we're the laughing stock of the press, ridiculed by every citizen in town. The telephone gets overheated from ha ha's, and I don't blame them. So you used to look like that, huh, Johnny? Yes, and I will again. That was made from my passport picture. Boy, them doctors are terrific. I told you they could fix you up. Hand me the mask, Dinky. Soon I won't have to wear a mask at all. Soon my face will be fixed as good as new. When? Dr. Cheever returned Saturday and I have the first appointment. Did you go to the bank, Tinky? Oh, yes. Hello? It's Benson. Yes, tell him to spot Harry with Watson to keep watching me during the opera. When I nod to them, they'll know what to do, and you know where to wait for us. Hello, Benson. The boss says to watch for him. He'll give you the nod. Yeah, he'll be in box 27A. <laughs> Tell you, gentlemen, opera is really a very fine institution. You should cultivate it more, Dinky. I certainly would if they made us a gift like this every night. There must be four. I bet there's five thousand dollars here. There was a full house. Every seat taken. Ah, oh, but they give a lot of passes away to them places. Finish counting it. I don't think it's over thirty-five hundred. Well, there's twenty-seven ninety, twenty-seven ninety-five. Put down that 20... money, Dinky. The rest of you stay where you are. Hello, Jeff. When did you get out? Oh, Johnny, this is Jeff. Who's that guy? Well, this is Johnny. He's our new boss. What's the matter with his face? 
It was burned. And then that's a mask. He's under. Never mind my face. Heard of you, Mr. Jeff. I guess you did. You're going to hear more of me now. This wasn't a bad job tonight, but you're not taking over, even if you have been using my boys. Because I'm back on the job. We've been doing all right with him. Nothing's going to stop it. We're going to live just as well. Only we'll change one thing. We don't need him. All right, boys, come on. Listen, Mr. Jeff, aren't you a little hasty? You see, we don't need you, you need us. These were your boys, they are mine now. We still all can work together. We all can be friends if you want to play friendly, it's up to you. I'll cut you in starting with this deal. And Jeff, I think that's being very generous. Well, what do you say? All right. Even if I don't like it, maybe I can take it this way. You're very wise, Mr. Jeff. None of us can do without friends. Get some drinks, Dinky. We are going to celebrate Mr. Jeff's return. If only you had come to me immediately after the accident. Then uh, it is difficult. I'll be frank with you. It's almost impossible. Impossible? No. There's hardly anything for the graft to adhere to. You see, the muscles have been destroyed. And that means the blood supply is cut off. The nerves are dead. You mean you could not fix my face? Not even in a year? Your degree of burn is so bad, so, so complete, that I don't care to raise any false hopes for you. I could perform a skin grafting operation, covering perhaps an inch at a time but I could only do that once every six months. Your case would take approximately 30 such operations. And that would mean 15 years at least. <laughs> 15 years. Why don't you look where you are going? I'm so sorry. Please excuse me. Forgive me, please. I wasn't looking. Let me help you. Thanks ever so much. You know, I, I shouldn't be allowed to go about like this, but I can't afford a guide dog. Not on my salary. What you? Your work? Yes, I string these beads for a department store. I like it. You see, I have only to work with my hands and I can think about everything in the world while I'm doing it. And since when? I mean, how long have you been? Oh, ever since I was a little girl. Do you think we found most of them? I think so. <laughs> Here is one more. Thanks ever so much. Uh, let me help you. If you don't mind, it's not far, just a couple of blocks. Uh, I'll carry this. Uh, please don't look around too much. I'm afraid it's a mess. It's always like this on Saturdays. That's when I go to the store to deliver my work and pick up new beads. No, I never seem to have time enough to clean up before I go. Just set them down here. Yes. Do you live here alone? Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm pretty dull company for most people. And anyway, it's wonderful to be independent, not having people feeling sorry for you. And I like this room. It's so cheerful. Don't you think so? Yes, very. But the chief advantage is my neighbor's taste in music. Do you like music? Yes, I do very much. I can hear the radio that belongs to the people next door. They like the same things that I like. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. I'm talking too much. I'm boring you. 
I have a strong intuition about people. I seem to feel what they're thinking. You want to go. Am I right? Oh, no, but right now somebody's waiting for me. <laughs> oh, that's different. Then I wasn't quite right this time. <laughs> no, but if you don't mind, Miss Williams, I, I'd like to come back. Would you really? I'll be glad. Goodbye. Goodbye. And thanks again for helping me. Jeff. Hello, Johnny. I got something here, something big. I thought maybe the two of us could figure it together. Listen to this. Charpenters Limited have just paid a fortune in customs duty on a shipment of diamonds from Africa. This is the largest consignment of gems received in this country during the last six months. It's a cinch. Do you want me to get the boys together? Yes, you get the boys together. I'll be busy till about five this afternoon. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're not taking that plane up again, are you? No, I'm not going to do any flying today. Actually, what I so often see. Just the two of us in the whole world. Sometimes I wish I could see the world the way you do. Maybe then I would imagine myself as something grand and noble. But you are, Janusz. You're unselfish and thoughtful. That's noble. And you're kind. You've no idea how happy your radio's made me. It's such a beautiful present. <laughs> it's like having company all the time. Yes, but your company keeps talking, 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 and never listens to you. Oh, I don't mind that. Sometimes I go for days without saying a word to anyone. I know. I've been lonely, too, before you came. I had no one to talk to the way I can talk to you. Your radio's brought me lots of friends. Even the gentlemen with the nice voices who talk about the best soap or the best dog food. They sound so friendly, just as if they're right in my room talking to me personally. Always you see things the way you want to. Janusz, there's something on your mind. Your voice is so careful. It doesn't sound in tune with the words you say. What is it you want to tell me? Helen, I... I saw the eye doctor again this morning, and he... I know. He said the same things the other doctors have said. Yes, but we go to someone else. No, Janusz, it doesn't matter. You are so young, your face is so beautiful. If you could see, you would have the whole world. I have the whole world. My blindness has given me the freedom of a kingdom you can never imagine. I see as I wish to see. To me, the appearance of everything is measured by the sound it makes. A streetcar is like an enormous rolling bell clanging down the street. And a man with a loud voice is always a giant. And the same thing happens with textures. Why, a little shabby alley cat can be a beautiful white ball of fur. And with scents, why, one flower can transform my room into this park. And you, Janusz. From the way you speak, from the way I hear you walk, from the gentleness of your touch, I know what kind of a man you are. What's the matter? Have I talked too much? No. No, I know what it is. I forget sometimes that people only feel sorry for me. 
That's why you're nice. I thought that you really enjoyed being with me. Sorry for you. It has nothing to do with you, it's me. Me, my face. If you could see my face, you would feel sorry for me. People who look at me, they see a mask. Artificial. But the face behind the mask... It's mutilated, hideous. A horrible nightmare. Out of which I can never awake. I don't believe it. You're lying to me. I wish I were. Tell me about it, Janos. Tell me how it happened. I want you to, so there can be no more fear between us. I think we ought to be getting back. Please, Janos. Please don't let's darken our friendship with a shadow. You must tell me everything. I listen. As I listen to the radio, when you talk, you're a friend. When you're silent, you're... I'll tell you. While we are walking home. Everything. From the first day I came to this country, there was not one who would have anything to do with me. I could not find work. It was impossible to go on. I was an outcast. So I did things I should not have done. I had only one goal, to get money and to get it fast. To get my face fixed. And then I found uh, I could not buy a face. That was the day I met you. You spoke to me. You did not turn away from me. Because you couldn't see my face. Even if I could see, it wouldn't make any difference. The moments I spend with you... <laughs> I'm Janusz Sobo again. I forget what I've become. But you haven't changed. To me, your face is kind and gentle, because that's the way you are. Nothing you have said or done has changed you. Try to get some music. I'll make some tea. We still have no clue as to the identity of the men. It was the most daring holdup in recent crime history. The robbers, disguised as employees of the gas company, escaped with thousands of dollars and kept. I can't understand people like that. With eyes they can see, but who are so blind and ugly inside. I pity them. If they're caught, they'll be shot in prison. If they're not, they'll still be in a prison, a prison of fear. They're so blind. Yes, they are blind. What's been keeping you, boss? You said five o'clock. You're late. Come on, boy genius. Make with the brains. We got this carpenter's job all cased. It really looks juicy. It's a cinch. The watchman makes his rounds every half hour. Yes, and the burglar alarm? Intermittent. It's attached here. This is the air conditioning system. When do you think we ought to pull it? I don't know. Huh? Not going through with this job. What's the matter, boss? You're feeling sick? Me? You're so blind. I'm quitting, that's all. I'm getting out. But why? Are you out of your mind? Jeff, I always uh, thought you'd feel better without me. From now on, the boys are yours, just like it used to be. Maybe you think we can't pull this job without you. What do you want us to do, raise your ante? Look, I have my reasons for getting out, and they don't concern you, boys. Forget all about me. I'll try to forget you. None of you ever got a bad deal from me. So you simply got to believe me when I say I... I can't keep it up. Are you holding out on us, Johnny? Or are you just plain yellow? Wait a minute. Come on. Forget it. Forget it. Where to, Johnny? Back where I came from. Long time ago.
You keep in the clear, Dinky. But if anything happens and you need me, you can reach me at this address. Keep it to yourself. Orange Bill, I never heard of it. Place somewhere in the country? A hideout? Maybe, and if Helen likes it, it'll be a honeymoon. Oh, Johnny, that's swell. Yes, and I am going to work, too. Work? We've gone a long road together, Dinky. You and I are a crooked road, but this is where I take the turn off. I'm gonna miss you, Johnny. When are you leaving? Early in the morning. Good luck, Johnny. I'm gonna look you up sometime. So long, Johnny. Goodbye, Dinky. I can hardly wait until tomorrow. I've always wanted a house with green shutters. Even though I can't see them, they must be friendly and inviting. I'm glad you cannot see the second car I bought. <laughs> but it has got a radio. I'll be ready long before you get here. Good night, Helen. Good night, Janos. Dirty skunk, that dirty double-crossing rat. What did you find? No wonder he's let us take his place over. He's been dealing with the cops. Here, look at this. Detective O'Hara on trail of killers and attempted diamond robbery. Why, that's the same name. Lieutenant James O'Hara. Look at this card. I found it in the desk. That yellow fink. I'll get him for this if it's the last thing I do. Forget him and only get us into trouble, and we don't even know where he is. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. We're gonna get out of here all right, not out of the country. I'll fix it so we're on our way within 24 hours. But first, I'm gonna settle with Janos. And the way to find Janos is to find Dinky. Try Al's joint, try Tony's. Get Harry and try every joint in town, but find Dinky. Okay. Thank you. Jeff, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Talk with me about what? Never mind. Come on. You better talk while you can. Where is he? I don't know. <laughs> Quit stalling. Where is he? You'll have to find out for yourself. Maybe he wants to play rough. Yeah, take his shoes off. No, please don't do that. No, no, please don't. Don't do that. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, please. I'll tell. I'll tell. Helen, here we are. Come on, come on, Hobo. Shutters. You'll have to go over everything to see what I've forgotten. The house is still a little empty. Doesn't matter, young. Anyway, the icebox is filled and I am starving. <laughs> hey, hey, he's starving too. So am I. We'll have our first breakfast with a guest. Helen. Helen, you know you still have time to change your mind. I'll not change, Jones. <laughs> it's good to hear you laugh. It's also so perfect. Yes, it is perfect. Now I'll be able to work again like I used to. You know, Helen, I can make beautiful clocks and with hand-carved faces and... And I can do my beadwork? No, no. I'll make a good enough living for both of us and 
You'll have to take care of our house. Our house. Hello, Johnny. I just thought I'd drop by and say hello. Who's the, the little lady? How did you find this place, Jeff? A little birdie. Squeal. Tinky. What did you do to him? Jonas, is something the matter? Who is this gentleman? Oh, Helen, this is Jeff Jeffries. We're old friends, buddies. We used to be partners. Weren't we, Johnny? Would you care for a cup of coffee, Mr. Jeffries? No, thanks. I'm in a hurry. I got friends waiting outside. We're taking a trip, a little vacation, thanks to Giannis. What do you mean? You know how it is, Johnny? The town's full of people who don't like the way we do business. That's an old story. Will you excuse me, please? Come along, hobo. Spill it. You didn't torture Dinky into telling me about this place unless it was important. Of course it's important. I wanted to tell you goodbye. I'm awful sorry we couldn't hang around your apartment till your friend O'Hara got there. Who? O'Hara? He's a pal of yours, isn't he? You are just a mug, Jeff. You haven't got a brain in your head. If you've come up here to get me, don't try it. You might never go on that little vacation. Why, you little squirt, you're just as false as that face and you know it. Better get going, Jeff. I'll get going, all right. I don't want to mess up my hands with... I won't even waste a bullet on you. But you better say your prayers anyhow. You gotta work fast to plant the thing. Kinda figured you and Johnny wouldn't talk long. What are you gonna do with chicken pants here? I think we've carried him long enough on this ride. Just as you say, Jeff. Don't be too rough. Watch out! Oh. Everything is clear sailing from now on. You mean flying, don't you? <laughs> That's right. number. That's for Mrs. Perkins. Important. Life or death. Sure. says it was a Mr. Dinky and very important. Climb in, I'll take you over. Dinky. Helen. I'll be right back. Hurry, Anna. I'll unpack the car. We can't work without music, can we? Do you like music, Obo? Come on.
Johnny is connected to your radio. In your car. What, in my car? In my car, in my radio? No. And then they said they were flying to Mexico. Johnny, I didn't want to tell them where you were. I tried, honest, I where didn't. Where are they flying from? From what place? They made arrangements with Mike. You know him. They're taking off at four in the morning. Four in the morning. Dinky, I want you to promise me something. Sure, Johnny. What? Go back and buy that farm for your mother. You are going to live there, too, and get strong again. Will you do that? Sure, Johnny, but I haven't got any money. Just go back. You'll have the money. I promise you that. That's Kerry. He's ready. Mike kept his part of the bargain. All right, let's go. Somebody's going to get a good car. They're welcome to it. Here's the dough. Get going. what I told Mr. O'Hara. This little guy slugs me and then leaves this envelope. And you're not going to print any of the story. Why not? Because it's part of the deal. Well, what does the letter say? Asks me to send the reward to some old lady in Minnesota. Then he makes a date to meet me in the middle of the Arizona desert at half past two in the afternoon next Friday. There's a map to show how to get there. Next Friday? That's a gag to throw you off the trail. Yeah, I'm not so sure. There's a ring of truth to this. Did you check the address in Minnesota? This is legitimate, all right. Poverty-stricken old lady who can really use the dough. Well, what do you say? You gone? I've got to. I can't afford to pass up a lead like this. What's the matter? Why are we going down? I don't know. Boy, it's hot. I fry eggs in the sand. What are you doing here? 
You shouldn't be surprised. I didn't want you to leave without me. I'll get him. Don't be a fool. Can you fly a plane? Nobody can fly any plane without fuel. But we can't stay here. Yes, we can stay here. We are going to stay here because we can't get away. We are over a hundred miles from any place and there are no trails, no highways and no planes. But we'll die. Yes, we'll die. Strange, isn't it? How a little switch can cause death to someone who is always trying to give happiness. Keep thinking thinking your little brains are turning round and round in circles looking for a way out, but you will not have the courage to take the way out yourselves. Foolishly and vainly you will hope. Hope that somehow you will be saved. And slowly you will surely die. For my sins I have earned my punishment. I shall die too. He's gone crazy. Go ahead. It won't hurt as much as being alive. Surrounded by my treacherous friends. And I won't have to wait as long as you. Listen, Jeff. He's gonna wait until we're exhausted or asleep, and then he's gonna take off. We gotta watch him. One of us has gotta be awake all the time. We'll take turns. Never mind about that. We'll tie him to the plane. You've had your ration. Please, Jim, just a little. There's Benson. Benson! Did you see any trace of anything? No, nothing. Just hills. And when I got on top of one, there was others all alike. Give me some water. Water, please. Just staying here, waiting for it. There must be some way out. If we start out in three different directions. It's a little late for that idea now. But maybe not too late. There's a house somewhere in every direction. And if only one of us reaches help. And we'll leave him here, just the way you wanted it. All right, let's go. over those dunes. Okay, set her down. I'll have to circle around. Right.
Jeff Jeffries. Well, that's three of the gang. Yep. We just kept going in a big circle. Huh? Now what? Now I walk over and take a look at that plane. find this, Mr. O'Hara. I am Janos. You remember the fire at the Excelsior Palace? You were kind to me. And I never forgot. Those you find here were unkind. And I did not forget them either. Janos Sabo. P.S. Here is the five dollars I owe. 